Back in November of 1992, David Lynch would unleash Twin Peaks' Fire Walk With Me, the cinematic counterpart to the hit TV show Twin Peaks. And as you can see in front of you, I have four different versions of the Fire Walk With Me score, music composed by Angelo Badalamenti. Now the score originally came out around the time of the film in uh, late 1992, but there were only two vinyl versions released at the time, one pressed for the UK European market and one pressed in Croatia. Now it would be a number of years before the score would actually find a re-release with the original keeping its uh, value for many, many years. But thankfully, the price has now come down on that original pressing since the reissue. And what I plan to do on this episode of The Record Room is talk about each of the different versions and give you my recommendation on which one sounds the best. Hey guys, it's your old pal Tony Giles TG here, welcoming you once again back into the record room. And on today's episode, I'm going to talk about one of my favorite scores of all time. And you'll know it's a favorite of mine because I own more than one copy. And the record you see before you is, of course, Twin Peaks Fire Walk With Me, the score for the David Lynch film. And at the time of the film's release in 1992, hands up, I was not a Twin Peaks fan. I was 14 years old and quite frankly, all I was really watching back then was anime and wrestling. That was pretty much it. And my musical taste went as far as, you know, Prince and what was ever really in the pop charts. I hadn't really delved into... Film, film soundtracks, rather, um, outside of things like Batman and, you know, the big kind of blockbusters. Fire Walk With Me, Twin Peaks, that was a little bit outside of my wheelhouse. But thankfully, as I grew older, uh, a good friend of mine introduced me to Twin Peaks. I fell in love with the series and I fell in love with the music because, hey, you can't not. If you, if you love one, you're definitely going to love the other. And around the time of the film's release, the score came out on CD cassette and vinyl and today i'm going to talk about each version as i said and we're going to kick off with the european pressing now i say european pressing because there was a croatian pressing as well and you know i don't have to explain to you why that might be a little bit odd but this is the original uk slash european pressing and it has the classic kind of film key art on the front cover and on the back as was the style at the time we have some images from the film and the track listing and what's cool about this one is it actually came with a printed inner sleeve which which is in my opinion very very cool and I'll just show that to you now and I love this if this was ever on a t-shirt, I'd never seen it and I would love to own it. So if anyone out there knows of a t-shirt that says this, please point me in the direction. In a town like Twin Peaks, no one is innocent. And as you can see there, the Warner Brothers logo at the bottom. And on the reverse of the inner sleeve, you have some credits there from the album. Um, essentially just, you know, telling you who played what. And also the lyrics for the uh, songs that feature on the album as well. And the UK European version came on the classic Warner Brothers logo, which I'll show you now. I'll take some screenshots as well, um, because I don't know how well these go into focus. But I am so, I have so many good memories of this label. You know, as I mentioned before, big, big Prince fan at the time. And most of my Prince records had this Warner Brothers label. And it's just, uh, yeah, hits me in the warm and fuzzies. And this version here, as I mentioned before, for the longest time, it, it held its value. This was a two, three hundred dollar record at one point. When the soundtrack resurgence really sort of kicked off and the boom was happening, you just you could not find this for love nor money for for less than a few hundred dollars or a couple of hundred bucks and it was just as much as i wanted a copy and i'm sure there are tons of other collectors out there as well that all wanted a copy 
it just, I always felt like the price was kind of prohibitive. And so I, I'd never had an original pressing for the longest time, but luckily I have a copy now because since it's 2017 reissue, the price on the originals has come down. Now, around the same time that we had the European version, we also had the Croatian version. Now, the Croatian version, I will admit, my copy is not in the best of shape. And truth be told, any time I've seen a Croatian copy of this come up, it never looks to be in great shape. Uh, I don't know if it's the quality of the materials they used or, or what, but it's just, I've never seen one in great shape. This is probably the best I've ever seen it. So you can see the ring wear there, but for all intents and purposes, this looks identical to the European version. If you look at the European score, you'll see there it does have a slightly glossier cover, but for all intents and purposes, it's exactly the same. And that actually follows through onto the back cover as well, where everything is virtually identical aside from the barcode. And down here, I wanna show I don't know if this will zoom in well enough, but I'll take a picture and I'll snap it so you can um, so you can see it. But down here, it actually says Croatia records made in Croatia. And as far as I know, this may be the only Croatian record I own. And again, this came out on the Warner Brothers label. And again, the insert identical to the European version. In a town like Twin Peaks, no one is innocent. And on the reverse, you have the credits and the lyrics to the songs. And even the label itself is identical to the European version, except for, and again, I will snap a picture of this if uh, you can't see it very well, but there is Croatian text around the outside of the label, which I uh, unfortunately cannot uh, speak Croatian, but it essentially says, you know, it's the, the legal lines. And then at the end, Croatia records Zagreb, Croatia. So this is a Croatian pressing. And at first I was thinking, well, how, how much of a Croatian pressing is this? Is this just a record that was manufactured at the same time as the European version? And then the jackets were made and then, you know, it was exported out. But this version and the European version, they actually have different matrices, which means that there were different plates. So this had its own stamper. So this is a different version from the European version. So I was piqued by that. Once I found out that information, I was kind of, ooh, well, I, I, I kind of got a hanker in. The, uh, the red mist came over me and I had to track down a copy of the Croatian pressing, which I am happy to have. And I'll talk about the sound quality um, in a bit. But up next came the 2017 Death Waltz reissue, which, I mean, we waited a long, long, long time for this. Nothing from 1992 until 2017. And the artwork on this one it may not be coming across because it's it's very it's black on black essentially, and the artwork is a companion piece to Death Waltz's version of the actual Twin Peaks score. So when you put the two together, they actually look really neat. But this this version is very cool. Comes with an OB at the top rather than at the side, which I always found to be pretty neat. I'll just take that off though. And at the top here, it does say Twin Peaks Fire Walk with Me original score by Angelo Badalamenti. And this is housed in a slip case, which you can take that out. And then you've got essentially the curtains from the Red Room, which is very neat indeed. On the back, you have the credits, which is uh, super cool. And then the inside, it has essentially the credits from the original inner sleeve and then some liner notes from um, film historian Mark Commode, which, uh, which is pretty cool as well. And as you may have guessed from the gatefold, this actually splits the record into two 
records. So instead of being a single soundtrack, or a single disc soundtrack, I should say, Death Waltz actually decided to split it and put it on two records, which I thought was pretty a pretty cool idea, you know? It's it's a very full album. When you listen to this, you know, it's, it's from that time when... I wouldn't say that the limits were pushed on original pressings, but this record definitely benefited, in my opinion, from being split over two, over two records. And what's really neat about this is it is printed on colored vinyl. I think they called this like uh, coffee and cherry pie. It's just this beautiful, deep, rich red. Um, which, yeah, which I am a, a big, big fan of. And it's, you know, it's got custom labels, which is, which is pretty neat. That's the, the A and the B side. And I'll quickly show you the C and D because the labels are slightly different. So there you go. That's C. That's a nice blue label. And that's D. And essentially you're taking a single disc LP and splitting it over two LPs, giving each track more room to breathe, uh, as it were. And as you can see here, I mean, like there is, there is not a lot of, uh, there isn't a lot of no fill on this. You know, the, the, the record is cut, not right up to the label, but it's, it's, it's a good amount. You know, there is a good amount of space on this for the tracks to uh, breathe, which which I am a fan of. And what's super cool about this, you can tell that a fan made this version of the record because on the inside, in the dead wax, there are actually quotes. And I'm just going to pull them up now because I love this. Yeah, this was, this was pressed on cherry pie colored vinyl, uh, a red and black marble. And on the, uh, the matrix run out, so side A, says let's test it for the record will the next victim be a man or a woman side b if i had a nickel for every cigarette your mom smoked i'd be dead side c do you know who i am i am the arm and i sound like this and then side d my vision ended and i awoke with a tremendous feeling of optimism and confidence in you and your future I just, I, I absolutely adore this pressing. I really, really do. I was so happy when this came out. It was nice to finally own Firewalk with me and you know, I could spin it and I could enjoy it. This came out in, I believe, is it January or May? I think this version came out in January of 2017. Yeah, this one came out January, 2017. And then Warner Brothers decided that they would actually reissue the album as well. And this version came out in May. So only a few months later, we are essentially getting a perfect facsimile of the original pressing of Fire Walk With Me. The main difference about this, and I, I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but this is, this is actually a gloss cover. So it's, it's very, very super shiny, which... I, I do like, but it is a fingerprint magnet. But essentially, it's it's exactly the same as the original pressing. You know, credits everything. The barcode's different, but everything else is the same. The plates are different. They have different matrix numbers. So I don't know for definite where the uh, masters for this one came from. It's possible these came from a digital source. It's possible they still came from the original analog tape. The matrices are virtually identical, but they are slightly different. So that leads me to believe that there were new stampers made for this version. And this came on 180 gram black vinyl. And the inside, well, how does it look? It looks exactly the same as the original, but this version, it's a thick or thicker um, inner sleeve. It's more, more card-like than the original version. But again, no one is innocent. In a, in a town like Twin Peaks, no one is innocent on one side. And then on the flip, you have the credits and the jackets. And we'll take a look at, label, look at the label, rather. And again, it, it is slightly different. It's a more updated version of the Warner Brothers logo uh, or label. It is slightly different, but it does retain that kind of original Warner Brothers aesthetic. And I would consider this to be a complete collection of Twin Peaks on vinyl. However, 
there is actually another pressing of Twin Peaks Fire Walk With Me. This record was again reissued in 2020 under the new Warner label, which is just Warner Records. And the only thing that's different is the label. Matrix is exactly the same. So they're using the same plate, same stampers. So essentially the only thing that's different is the label. And I'm not a label collector, so for me, it doesn't really make a huge difference that it just has a different logo on there. I don't really see the point in spending 20, 25 pounds to pick up a record. I already own four times just to have a different label when essentially I'm never going to play it. I do like to play and listen to the different versions of each of the records that I have. So now the thorny issue, which version sounds the best? Well, to be perfectly honest with you, they all sound great. They all have their merits. This one was actually really hard to narrow down. The original pressing sounds great. Death Wars version splitting it over two LPs sounds great. The Croatian version, apart from, you know, a few pops and clicks, which is nothing to do with the actual recording or pressing of the record, that one sounds great too. However, if I really, really had to pick Gun to Head, which I don't know why anyone would want to possibly do that when I'm just talking about my love for Twin Peaks, if I really had to pick a copy and say, if you're going to spend your money and you really want the overall best sound possible, it would be the original pressing from 1992. And as I mentioned several times throughout this video, this record has become far more affordable than it once was. Since the reissues, you can pick this up fairly cheaply now. Now it's not super cheap, I'm still talking about a 50 pound record, but considering it used to be hundreds, I'd say that's a pretty good deal. However, Whichever version of Twin Peaks Fire Walk With Me you already own or are thinking about grabbing, trust me, it's going to sound great. You are going to have a wonderful time with it. Thank you once again for joining me for this uh, little look inside Twin Peaks Fire Walk With Me and which version I think is the best. Remember, you can follow us on social media at Record Room Show. And for those of you out there that, that haven't seen or are unaware, I've started my podcasting career again with my former DFC cohort, Scott Johansson. We're now talking all things vinyl, mainly soundtracks, over on the Tony Scott Motion Picture Podcast, which you will be able to find on the interwebs. Check out my social media or the Record Room Show social media. You'll be able to find it nice and easy. If you like things a little bit nerdy and more of the deeper dive, that's definitely the podcast for you. But that's it for now, guys. Stay gold, and I'll see you real soon.